The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. This is, again, like all of this rich, rich history and lore. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. Makes sense. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? And that doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. Right. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. That is, again, all of that sounds so, is so interesting. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla, and given gifts to help us on our journey. We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. Right. By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all Quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. That makes sense. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. I want to talk about something else. Like what? Something... I end it, and we're going to end with something a little more touchy. The Geth. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Tell me about them then, Tally. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. So, the Geth share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. Yeah, that is really fascinating. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. <laughs> yeah, I think this is going a little bit off of over Clive's head. That doesn't make any sense. I'm probably oversimplifying. The Geth are incredibly advanced and complex creations. 
All you need to know is that they get smarter when they gather in large numbers. As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Ah, uh, yeah. As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. As this might be something naive for Clive to say, but why? Why the panic? I don't see what's so bad about those questions. They're honest questions. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. Which is not their fault. It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. Uh. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. Right. Right. So they they believe since the Geth were becoming more sentient, they knew that eventually they would turn on them, and therefore they decided to get on to deactivate them early before that happened, before they had a chance to rebel. Well, they defended themselves then. You can't blame them for fighting for their survival. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. Right. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now we drift through space, exiled, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. It's hard to feel sorry for you. Your ancestors tried to wipe out another species. We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the first place. But we did not make a mistake when we went to war against them. If but... we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. None. Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's ever tried to contact them? They didn't kill Saren. What does that tell you? The Geth are not innocent victims in all this. They're the enemy. They want to destroy us. Not just the Quarians. All organic life. That's why they've joined up with Saren. And that's why we have to stop him. All right. Okay. All right, Tally. All right. Good. This, it, this is all interesting stuff, Tally, and a lot of things for, for Clive to think about. We'll talk again later. I should go. See you later. See you later, Tally. Hey, Shepard. You need something? No, I'm good. I should go. See you later. All right. Now let's... Now that we've gone through all of these areas... I find it interesting that we ended up putting most of the non-human, non-human characters down at the bottom of the ship for some reason. Hey, Caden. I'm going to talk to you last, Caden, because reasons. Sleeper pod. These sleeper pods, hopefully they're a lot more comfortable than they, than they look. I don't know how I would feel in, like, you know, sleeping semi-upright. I guess this is supposed to be my quarters then. Personal manual. Okay. Yeah, I think this is my quarters then. Not bad, not bad. Alenko. Alenko. I mean, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> I'm just gonna sneak up behind him. Hey, hey, Caden. <laughs> nice. It's all sweaty and perspiring. Hey! Anything you need, Commander? Uh, I'm looking for some personal input. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Look but at look, Clive's I've perspiring too. Time for now, Commander. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. But 
But why can't we have personal debriefings now? What's your opinion on the last mission? I don't see how we could have done things any better. At least not without getting to Eden Prime sooner. And we were on the scene faster than any other Alliance ship could have been. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew is. You really are. have nothing else to say, Thoughts? Kaden? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. Oh, Kaden. We'll time for personal debriefings later. Kaden. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander? I guess it's because I guess it's because we talked to Kaden right after Eden Prime, so he doesn't really feel like there's anything else left to talk about. All right, fine, fair enough. Okay, everyone, it is finally time for us to set sail, sail, and the galaxy is our oyster. We can pretty much go wherever we want. Um, once I can open the star, the galaxy map. The galaxy map I have to, I have to get to from this direction. <laughs> it's been so long. Oh, it's been so many years. All right, let's open the galaxy map, shall we? Uh, and this is going to be a massively right click to zoom out, left click to zoom in, select a destination and scan or land on a planet. Okay. Uh, the Citadel, supposedly constructed by a long extinct Protheans, this colossal deep space station serves as the capital of the Citadel Council. Gravity is simulated through rotation and is comfortable 1.02 standard G's on the wards and a light 0.3 standard G's on the Presidium ring. Total length open 44.7 kilometers. Diameter opener 12. Diameter open 12.8 kilometers. Population 13.2 million, not including the keepers. Gross weight 7.11 billion metric tons. So we're in Citadel space, and we are at the Citadel, and we want to go. Yeah, we're in the Serpent Nebula. Oh my gosh, it's been a while since I've been on this map. And this map is a little bit different than from how it works from both Mass Effect 2 and 3. So it looks like we only have three main places. The Exodus Cluster. Now we do have a few places that um, are side questy. I'm going to get to those places uh, later. I do want to continue on with the... Um, I do want to continue on with the... Uh, main storyline at least for at least for one more um, main story quest area of which we have three choices so we can either go to Pharos, Novaria or Liara's dig site in Artemis Tau. I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start we're gonna go to Artemis Tau and I don't know which one Gnosis, Sparta, Macedon, Athens Let's let's travel to Gnosis for right now. Nice. Go Joker, go Joker, go. I don't remember which system Liara is on, but we'll we'll figure that out. we go through the mass relays okay so let's check all of these planets here we've got Arcanes uh, a small hydrogen helium gas giant Arcanes has been deployed as a full-featured if modest stopover for ships hauling refined materials from Therum in addition to a powerful magnetic field to dump drive change, to dump drive charge, Akanis has a largely automated infrastructure of helium-3 defi helium defining the endatorium mining on its many watery ice moons. Many water ice moons. Orbital period 470.2 Earth years. Radius 14,549. Day length 16.2 Earth hours. Let's survey. Gas deposit surveyed. Scans of this giant have detected a large concentration of nitrogen. Cool. And I'm assuming the scans do something for us. Zakros. Zakros is a terrestrial world with nitrogen methane atmosphere containing trace amounts of hydrocarbons. Its frigid surface is mainly composed of water ice and hydrocarbon slush. Most of the surface is not solid enough to support the full weight of a landed ship. If approach is necessary, use shuttles or keep the ship's mass effect envelope up. 
orbital period 33.9 Earth years, radius 4572 kilometers, day length 45.6 Earth hours. Oh wow. Um, atmospheric pressure. 0.4 Earth's atmosphere, surface temperature negative 71 Celsius, surface gravity 0.4 G. I wonder how they, how much time it took for them to like design all these planets and these systems. Are many. Are many is a terrestrial world with an unusually thin atmosphere of krypton and xenon. Its surface is composed of silica with deposits of carbonaceous material. The initial flyby probe of Armini detected multiple areas at the equator with oddly regular surface protrusions. Closer investigation revealed these as millions of elaborate crypts a few feet below the surface, left by a long extinct spacefaring species called the Zyof. I never knew that. Zyof. Many human universities wish to perform archaeological excavations. Council law holds grave sites as sac sacrosanct, however, and the matter has been tied up in court for a decade. Oh, wow. Um, I guess there's one thing to, to try to dig up the graves to study the ancient civilizations, but at the same time, you know, the whole, you know, the whole sacrilege of doing that, uh, that's really interesting. Orbital period 151.3 Earth years, radius 6,077 kilometers, day length 57.8 Earth hours, atmospheric pressure 0.18 Earth atmosphere, surface temperature negative 168 Celsius, and surface gravity 0.8 G, 80% of the gravity. Aram and Phaistos. Phaistos. Phaistos is a small terrestrial with a trace of the atmosphere of carbon dioxide and xenon. The surface is scorching hot and mainly is composed of sulfur and various silicates. There is little of interest in this desolate world. Orbital period 0.3 Earth years, radius 42-38 kilometers, day length 57.2 Earth hours, atmospheric pressure 0.27 Earth atmosphere, surface temperature 51, 551 Celsius, and surface gravity 0.63 Gs. And last but not least, Therum. Ooh, Therum is a distant but rich industrial world claimed by the Human Systems Alliance. Its plentiful heavy metals have fueled the recent manufacturing boom on Earth. Ore samples rich with fossils of simple silicon-based organisms indicate Therum was, has more, was more hospitable in the past than it is at the present. Perhaps this explains the many protheans ruins dotting the surface, most of which have been looted by mining corporations. Colony founded in 2167, population 34,000, capital Nova Yekaterinburg, orbital period 6.4 Earth years, radius 6724 kilometers, day length 28.3 Earth hours, atmospheric pressure 0.68 Earth atmospheres, surface temperature 59 Celsius, and surface gravity 1.12 G, so it's a little bit more, gravity is a little bit more stronger than on Earth. Let's go ahead and land. All right, who should we bring? So again, I want to rotate characters around and bring people more into, you know, bring people more into uh, the light, so to speak. So I spent a lot of time on the Citadel with with er, with Rex and Tali. We started the game with Ashy and Caden, so I'm gonna bring Garrus into this particular one, and let's bring. This is a scientific. This is a scientific site, right? So maybe it makes sense for us to bring Tally. Let's ex yeah, let's let's bring Tally. We're gonna be very sciency today, which I like. Okay. Oh, I have to. Remember. Commander, I'm picking up some strange readings. Really strange, like off the damn charts. It looks like it's coming from an underground complex a few clicks away from the drop zone. Oh, that's right. I have to remember how to, how to control this thing. How do I leave? I forgot how to use the Mako. How do I use this thing? Um, powers. Vehicle. Cannon to zoom. Return to Normandy. Uh, thrusters. Space bar. All right. I guess I can't exit. Oh, I, this Mako I just can't stand how.
Alright, I guess I'm going to... That's right, that's... Um... So far, so good. Refinery, eh? Okay. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh. I didn't, I only tapped it. I only tapped it. Oh. Resume last save. This is going to, this is pretty much, that pretty much is going to set the tone for this playthrough. I can't even, I haven't even gotten into any enemies yet. I'm already killing off our characters. This is Terrible. All right. Stupid Mako, I am not a fan. If you love the Mako, I'm, I'm, I apologize profusely. I am not a fan. Which is why I am hoping that when they bring the Mako back for Mass Effect Andromeda, it's going to handle a lot better than it does in this one. Because I am just... Oh, I cannot stand the controls of this thing. Alright, keep going, just keep driving, just keep driving, just keep driving, just keep driving. Oh goodness gravy. What is that? What is that? Oh, oh my. Oh. Tally. I appreciate my dear. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. Okay, okay, okay. Oh no, 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 no. Don't flip on me, please. It is virtually impossible to flip this Trying thing. Trying to knock completely. down the front door seems stupid. Maybe we could find a side window? Oh my. Yeah, how's that dodging? Now that I've overheated. So, trying to find a side. Oh my goodness. Oh. My poor Mako. Find the side. Moving out. Okay, so we need to open the gate somehow. What do you guys think? The side. I forgot how to. Refinery. Maybe if I... Perimeter secured. Yeah, I understand, Varric. I'm just trying to remember. I'm just trying to remember how to get past this... This area. Oh, I forgot. Sorry guys, it's been so long, I don't remember. Here, maybe if I go through... Right button fires the Mako sky, lose left button fires, so you shift to zoom in for a better view. Oh. That's right, I forgot about the uh, zoom. Oh, 
I think I see the side entrance that they're talking about. Or maybe not. Oh, there it is. Oh my gosh, Mako. Mako. I cannot stand this. I cannot stand this machine. Cells here? All right. Hmm. Easy decryption. Locked crate. Let's check it out. Begin manual of overdrive. Override. Override. Accelerate. Sniper rifle. Heavy armor for human. Light armor for human. I might give the heavy armor to Ashley then. Okay. Negative contacts. Oh, I keep forgetting I can't jump in this game. Oh, it's so that's so disorienting, especially after playing Fallout 4. Weapons locker. Yep, let's do it. Oops. My mistake. There we go. Shotgun assault rifle. Oh my, oh my goodness. Stasis. Goodness, my shields, my beautiful shields. Oops, no, no. I did not mean, to, I did not mean to use a grenade. Sorry, Gar Garrus. Oh, come on, Clive. Gotta do better than that. Okay, I guess shift is sort of moving fast. Kind of, sort of, moving fast. Plasma containment cell and something. Oh, there's someone here. 